Max Webster. Max Webster is the creator of the ongoing history of new music. Please welcome to the stage, broadcaster, Alan Cross. Hello. This segment begins with a question. The question is, what is this Max Webster? <laughs> this, wait, hold on, back up. There's a story that begins just after eight o'clock on Wednesday, September the 7th, 1977. I persuade me, 15 years old, I persuade my parents to let me go see Rush. My second ever concert is the Farewell of the Kings Tour. God, I waited for weeks to see this show. I show up nice and early. I sit in my seat. The light goes down at 8 o'clock sharp. And on, com on comes this band. It wasn't Rush. First of all, the singer was wearing a full-length red long john outfit. <laughs> with pink sneakers and a giant, big cowboy hat. And the more I looked at him, the more I realized that his arms and legs seemed too long for his body. And he moved like one of those inflatable wavy things that we see outside a car dealership. But I overlooked all that because the band was good. I mean, they were really, really good. No idea who they were. At one point, somebody leaned over and they said, the band's called Max Webster. Oh, okay. And during the set, the singer, whose name was Max, obviously, <laughs> stood at the front of the stage and said, what is this Max Webster? And a whole bunch of strange people in costumes came out of the wings and started dancing with this wavy guy with the legs that were too long and the arms that were too long. But that was it. I was hooked. That week, I went out and bought the first two Max Webster albums, the self-titled debut and High Class and Borrowed Shoes. Now, I just want you to imagine, we all know it, imagine the artwork that adorns High Class in Borrowed Shoes. That album, that artwork, is the state of Florida's worst woke nightmare. This was 1977. If Ron DeSantis were to see a copy of High Class and Borrowed Shoes, the man would shit. I bought every, every single Max Webster album after that. Meet Me at My Sleeve, A Million Vacations, and then comes Universal Juveniles. Check, check. And it features this song, a duet with Rush of all people called Bad Scar. Bust the busters, screw the feeders, make the healers feel the way I feel. God, one of the greatest hard rock songs this country has ever produced. And I can tell you that all those songs on all those Max Webster albums lived on albums in my bedroom and cassettes that blasted out of my 79 Firebird. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something, if you look at my iPhone, iPhone 14 right now, many of these same songs are still there. Now, many, many years later, I got to work with Kim Mitchell. I was the program director at 102.1 The Edge. Across the hall was Q107. Who was doing afternoons for Q? Kim Mitchell. That was so cool. Remember, my 15-year-old self. What is this, Max Webster? It's Kim. And I like to think now that Kim's a friend. So it's a full circle here for me tonight, and I just absolutely love this. Every Max Webster song is a weird journey. 
And that journey has led us here to Canada's Walk of Fame. It is deserved, it is overdue, and it is absolutely bloody necessary. So, what is this, Max Webster? Let me show you. Check. Check. Toronto's Max Webster rose from hometown favorites to international success. They released seven albums, six gold through the five and one platinum. Breaking out such hits as Hangover, High Class and Borrowed Shoes, Diamonds Diamonds, Paradise Skies, A Million Vacations, and let go of the line. One of this country's great touring bands, Max Webster played up to 250 dates a year, opening for rock music heavyweights across the world.
of all of us and how all of us see a little bit of ourselves in this incredible artistry that's uh, been performed here tonight on the stage and that's given us so much joy over the years. So, I, 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 got, I got a star on the Walk of Fame a few years ago, but Jeffrey Lander, I didn't get one of these. I got another gorgeous trophy, but they must have changed it. Okay, we're going to put this aside now and I'm going to bring up the boys in the band. Come on up to the stage, Kim Mitchell. Fabulous. Um, well, I mean, 
it's, it's truly an honor to finally um, get this. <laughs> but the funny thing was, is, is they asked us um, when we got the letter, they said, do you have an eight by 10 of the band? I said, we broke up four decades ago. <laughs> no, there's no eight by 10, and, and man, you don't want to see one either. So. Uh, but it feels great, and um, I'm just actually thinking about all the songwriting power in this room. Uh, we were around for so many decades, so a lot going on there. And uh, to see all these guys that we we all rehearsed together, we, we took the piss out of each other during rehearsals, we had a lot of fun. And uh, thank you for, uh, for all those years and all those memories that we built up over the, that time. Thank you. thank you for all the love and all the energy. Really, congratulations. Okay, and now... Walk of Fame is April Wine. 